Joining me is the illustrious Jeb. We have a slew of Group C matches today and some pretty important ones to boot. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I hope everyone has been doing great. Uh, and as Quarter said, today we have a, uh, a good amount of games. And not just just Group C matches, it's also Shizunix three times in a row. This is true. It's basically like all of Shizunix's matches. So, um, yeah, while we wait for the match to start, which will take a little bit, I assume, uh, we can talk about the standings real quick, because Group C is probably the closest group yet. Every other group has... Uh, at least one person. Well, Group A and Group D have been decided. Group oh, B hasn't been decided they yet. They actually just but leapt groups... straight into it. So while we talk about this, I'm going to oh, pivot us over. Actually, yeah. Um, but Group C is still uh, rather close, actually. Uh, and Trot, Shize, and Gold can all make it out, uh, depending on how their matches go. Uh, Trot is in the lead currently with 13 points, but has one more, matches, uh, one more match played over Shize and Gold. Uh, Shizé has 12 points, Gold has 9 points, so anyone can make it out depending on these games. So Shizé will have to uh, to show, well, some good matches today if he wants to make it out. And while we go into the game, we see that the Calibus and the Gialis get snap banned on both sides. This makes a um, lot of sense. Gialis is very ruinous into Trot's team if it's not appropriately respected. There's very few things that Trot actually has that can appropriately answer it if it gets its hold up. Yeah, and it seems like the the, the Gialis is um, it, it, it's just very scary, right? As always. Oh, um, of course. So, we before the match started, we we were discussing the teams a little bit, and um, it, it's pretty much as we we expected, right? Uh, Trot is bringing the Crystal Deluge strats with the Mudred, uh, and and uh, well, the, the several mentals on that team. That where Shize decides to bring a more aggressive squad, as we can expect from Exo at this point. With that uh, token plus Amphitir as a possibility that uh, that Neko also brought. Yep. Uh, we also, of course, see the uh, Firekoish Babala Osiara offensive core there. It's something that's been very popular at the moment. We also see, of course, the Valish. It's kind of a wild card with this team, whether that's a physical or special Valish. Uh, noteworthy on Trot's side as well, though, is the Nesla, which has become kind of an anti-meta tem at the moment, answering a lot of the aggressive leads that we see very comfortably. Like, uh, it, you can lead it into Osiara and not feel terrible. You can lead it into guys and not feel terrible uh, it's got a lot of versatility to it still though we do see the adoro um volfi opener which is equally pretty spooky this gives us synergy master emanips there's still a lot of opportunities here for virulent gust oh and there's that token so she said does uh pick the token which is it's okayish into adoro right even though adoro is that monster special defense stat uh, mm -hmm. the wind moves uh, with potentially hand fan will still chunk out uh well, really badly. She, uh, Shizunix Valash gets banned. Uh, as you said, it can be both special and physical on this team. It's just a pain to deal with overall, especially if you're running a slower team. Uh, Valash can just run over after being set up, so that's a really good ban on, uh, well, for Trotter. And oh, for there's sure. that Nestle ban. Yeah, uh, that you talked about I it a actually... bit. I can understand why mm. it gets banned, but uh, it, it's good to see Nestle getting banned sometimes. Oh, it, yeah. it, I think it's been a while since I saw that. I 100% respect this. If you look at Shizunix's team, it really doesn't want to deal with that Nestle. Uh, this frees up the Barnshee, it frees up the Firekoi, it frees up the Osiara. It means there's fewer things to soak the damage coming out from the Amphitir. There's a lot of separate things there. Now, obviously, it's a weird, weird situation trying to wall an Amphitir with a Nestle because basically you just hope it doesn't sneeze at you but um it's it's still very valuable if you want to trade into those t strikes and into so much of this backline on shizunix like suddenly he can actually pick fire koisho shiara now which he wasn't able to pick before still though looking at shizunix's team this is going to be pretty spooky for trod and he definitely is going to want to land an effective um deluge at some point inside this and make sure that he is capable of weathering the storm that shizunix is going to be throwing on this so, uh, Trot also, I see some, there are several things on Trot's side that, side that might be a problem. That Adoro specifically looks extremely scary. Uh, it's just a token, pretty much, that can hit it really hard. Yeah, uh, Firequash will hit, Amphitir. chunk it out with... Um, oh, yeah, 
I guess the the thunder strike does a does a good amount of damage. Yep. Uh, and that uh, the tor is also not looking too bad. There's the, the two fire types, but uh, it it will resist a good amount of moves as well. So I think uh, I think Trot isn't in the worst position either, as he uh, he picks up the uh, the barn she has a lost pick. Yeah, no, this is looking like it'll be an even matchup, but both players have to be very careful of the opponent's win conditions. Uh, with the heater immediately starting us off here, um, right. My concern is how is Trot going to make sure that things stay on his side here? My curiosity is if we're going to see, like, uh, Firekoi swap in on the Tolkien spot, and if that is the case, then my next hope with that is, like, you know, you, you double into that spot. Um, I think... It, the problem is, I think Adoro needs to be conserved. Yeah, I, as I said, that Adoro is really important for Troll. Uh, there, there's two Temtem that, that, well, uh, threaten it, but the Adoro doesn't get conserved, stays in, water cutting really goes out onto the Fovey, takes almost 50%, play goes down onto Babawa, 30% down exhaust, and, and that trap from the handcuffs, so uh, handcuffs on Fovey, as we expect. And that Windburst onto the Adora still takes it decently. Uh, it, it goes down to 46% after the burn, but look at that massive damage onto the Babawa. The, the quad effective Virtualent Gust. Uh, even, or with the burn, he just managed to survive because of that burn, probably. Uh, I think it's a combination of the burn and the absence of synergy. Like, the, the burn definitely helped there. If we didn't see the minus 30% from both of those, uh, that would have probably been a dead Babawa, as you say. A uh, combination of mucus and burn and reasonable special defense investment, one can assume, probably saved our uh, charming slug there. Uh, this is still looking like a good general turn for Shizunix. Now, obviously, Trot has the Barnshee as a potential swap in for the tornado on Tolkien. I don't think Shizunix can push the, Tol the Adoro KO this turn. Uh, I actually think it's better for him to like try to reposition that side of the board because the Barnshee can just eat that and then you're basically down a Babawa for very little. Yeah, and that, that Adoro does still have some uh, some value for later. So I do I do like swapping it out um, because that Osiara just looks really threatening if... Well, I, I guess you have Tord as well that can swap into it, but... Adoro appreciates that swapping a little bit more, I think. Adoro has a lot to answer, Osiara. Blizzard is obviously still a concern for it, but you can kind of deal with that. Yeah, exactly. The Fovey going down to 45% is also not exactly what you want, but everything stays in. Plague takes out the Babawa, so no more Babawa. But, uh, well, Energy Manip comes down first. Was this a heist or a wind burst instead, I wonder? No, it I, was a wind yeah. burst conserving uh, stamina and trying just to make sure that it just takes out the Adorp Boros without overexerting too hard and saving its priority. So, I uh, I don't mind that too much. The only thing that happened now is that Token takes a, a good chunk of damage from the uh, Synergy Energy Manipulation, right? Uh, and it has uh, that exhaust. The exhaust, I think, is the more important thing there. If it actually wants to use its Tornado or any of its other good moves, it basically has to overexert. Um, but that also means it saved its Tornado. So, it, um, it now can just bounce, right, and just have that tornado up uh, for uh, for the tour tonight if uh, if Shizu wants to. Ooh, this was a really good read from Shizunix. This. Oh god, that is not a board that you want to send in your barn sheet. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, basically, that needs oh, to immediately god. leave and become a tour tonight, but then that tour tonight still takes a Tolkien to the face. So uh, I I think the Amphitheater was was a very uh, safe switch in though because it answers both the Ukama and the Banshee. It's just not that great against Tord. Yeah, so the I guess for is... she said it wasn't like a that big of a read. I think I think it was a, a good swap in. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty reasonable on Shizunix's side since you have the Tolkien there and you conserved your tornado. It's it's really painful uh, for Tor to swap or for Trot to swap in anything here because if you swap in Tor, expecting the Amphitheater, your Tor is gonna get tornadoed. I actually think 
what Trot wants to do here is swap Yukama on... Uh, I think you do a full double swap this turn. I think you swap Yukama in on the Barnshee side, and you swap in the Tortonite on the Vulfi side. Uh, you're basically trying to bait out that you're swapping the Barnshee, but then you swap it into... Like, I'm assuming that he's probably got a Yukama that can survive at least one... Uh, Thunderstrike, so it's not just yeah, dead on arrival. Hope so. If, if I, that isn't the case, then this is probably game. But I'm assuming that Trot has a line out here because it's always better to assume that, in my opinion. So yeah, I, I, I especially in this position, I really like saving the tornado for the token. Uh, I think it's great because it just can sit on it now until Tort comes out, and then you have that priority move, get some some lost value off that token. Mm -hmm. uh, Tord um, also doesn't appreciate the fire moves, of course, so Token still can use that fire tornado as well, but that doesn't have the priority, so... Well, this is why I'm saying, like, trying to bait out something from Shizunix this turn is the best possible outcome Trot can hope for here, and I think the double swap, conserving the Barnshee, which just melts to uh, Shizunix's... Uh, Amphitir, like you don't want to be dealing with that. We see the fire Quish come out instead as the plague comes down. No swaps happen. The Volfi gets targeted by the plague. Yeah, so this Volfi is just trapped now. It's exhausted, trapped. Energy manip, another synergy energy manip coming down onto the Quish. This time was aimed at that token. Uh, DV also coming down onto the Quish. And Quish takes a massive chunk of damage, down to 8%. And it's also trapped now because of the handcuffs. That Fovi though, oh, dies to OX. Oh, this is actually really good. Right now, yeah, now Tortonite can just come in. Uh, yeah. there's, there isn't a Tolkien on the board now. Yeah, sure, Quetzalinho still smacks you pretty hard, but you don't get priority on either of those attacks unless you're swapping in something uh, that doesn't kill the Barnshee on the Amphitir slot. In the meantime, you've got uh, the ability to... You've still got Tornado and Energy Manip on the Barnshee side to potentially outspeed this Koish, depending on how Trot spe uh, spec'd that. Uh, it, obviously, at this point, three times, uh, three times up on Trot's side, definitely still at a disadvantage to the onslaught that Shizunix was bringing in here, but I figured this was always going to be a backswing of a game if Trot was going to bring this back, because, oh my god, it's just so much to deal with in terms of the uh, aggression coming out from, Shiz coming out from Shizunix. Uh, yeah, that Fofi dying though to the OX, as you said, it's pretty big because it gives Trot like a lot of leeway in his switches. So now this this Tord is just sitting there next to Barnshi, and what do you do as Shizunix? Uh, your Koish almost died; it's trapped. Uh, the exhaust is not relevant right now because it will die soon, most likely. But no free synergy for that Koish, and that takes a lot of the value away from Koish. Yeah. So um... everything stays in again. Koish just dies to the to the energy manipulation. Amphitir also stays in, but it might eat a, a crystal spikes after it throws down the thunder strike. That Barnshee is not gonna live one, of course. You four trade times. It. Yeah, yeah I think it has this to be a trade right. Still a reasonable trade actually for Shizunix. Um unfortunately though at this point, the Barnshee did its job for Trot. Oh it survived. 2.6% HP. While it survived, it's unlikely to KO the um, Yukama on Trot's side, and the Osiara is looking like it's not going to get value this game. I mean, Amphitir at least will get, a, get off another Plague uh, this way, right? You're right, it'll get a Plague off. Um, we haven't seen... Okay, I know Trot usually runs some wild items on his uh, Yukama, so if this is like a camo Yukama, I won't be necessarily surprised. Oh no, he runs Camo Nest, so this means it will get the exhaust, so that is obviously still a problem. Yeah, so that Amphitir surviving on a sliver of health means it will get another Plague off. That Ukama hasn't been on the field yet, so no priority for Ukama here. Token coming out, and yeah, Token does not want to eat any of those water moves. Uh, a it might be a bait. and a Plague might take down this Ukama, yeah. though. No priority on Okama means that it is vulnerable to a double in, and if that happens, then Trot might be in a pretty bad position. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with that. That's looking pretty nerve-wracking for Trot to have to deal with inside this. Um, I think at this point, you just, like, 
assess whether or not you're able to live both of those hits. I know that Trot li really likes leaning into the bulk of Yukama, something that is often undervalued and underestimated by people in Temtem, like especially when Osiara has been gaining popularity. One of the things that really distinguishes uh, Yukama in play is the fact that it's really able to survive a lot of these hits. We do see the cage come down, uh, something one can always expect. Hard trot to do in the face of danger uh the plague oh, is gonna be more than enough though oh man 75 percent amphitheater dies to do your x but that has to be the tornado and yep. there's no way ukama lifts this ukama okay, this goes down like and... a clear shizenix game then uh absolutely no way i'm seeing trot coming back from this with just a torque night and a dream against what i like against a hand fan Tolkien, like there's there's no answer to that. Yeah, that um, that that plague did so much damage. Uh, maybe it is a little bit more offensive than uh, than we gave it credit for before. And there's the you can see there's the the win for Shizenix and the first first of two games goes to Shiza here. Yep, no, very impressive to see. Well played, obviously two Shizenix. Uh, keeping that on the like, okay. The token was very important in the way that it pressured yeah. in that match. Uh, additionally, just I think the Adora Boros going down early was kind of rough, but the Adora Boros was kind of rough that match. Like a lot well, of the things uh, that it would have been able to deal with more comfortably stayed in the back far longer than I think uh, Trot expected. And the wins were just really frustrating for him. Uh, given that the Barnshee was that, just uh, liquefied by the Amphitheer, it yeah. was just difficult for Trot to find ground inside that. I mean, there was a reasonable middle game effort, and the Torque Knight was pretty effective. I just... <clears throat> as you said before, the loss of the um, Volfi was another uh, significant turning point. Yeah, so it, in the moment, it looked okay for for Trot, because, well, it, it gave him a lot of uh, advantage in, in swaps. But in the end, ha not having that Plague or that DV is, like, it, it, it was pretty big. Yep. Also, that Adoro looked really good, but did it looked good versus Babawa and Osiara. Shisei didn't use his Osiara. Nope, didn't use it at all. With that, though, we're getting into our second game of our best of two here. So what adaptations will we see in um, in pick and ban? Because, well, Trot has to change something up here if he doesn't... I mean, Shizu had the clear advantage last game, barely used Osiara, so Trot has to swap something up. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely think Trot does need to swap something up here. Uh, we do see the Gallus ban still, though, which I think is just necessary. Um, yeah, I Gallus actually like so him much. picking... Uh, if he first picks Nestle here, I think he's in a much better position. The Ukama goes out this time, not appreciating that potential threat of having a fast water attack. Uh, and also a, a resist for fire and water, of course, but that leaves open the Calibus on Trot's side. And Calibus is pretty good against the likes of Firekoish, Babawa. Yep. Uh, it's, it, that it looks like a pretty good does Calibus. does still die to wins, though. Yes, and Shizei has some good wins. In, well, Tolkien, Tolkien is a good win that doesn't appreciate the water attacks, but that Barnshee specifically is what looks scarier. Ooh, Shizei this... opens up with the Velash Tolkien. And, uh, well, that Valash was banned last game, so we're seeing a lot of Temtem that were banned last game. Mm -hmm. So the game is gonna look completely different, probably. Uh, we do not know whether this is a physical or special Valish out of Shizenix. Um, if this is a physical Valish, I think that Trot is a lot less scared. I think the thing that he truly dreads here is a turn one madness buff that's just difficult for him to punish. Like, he doesn't have enough pressure outside of, like, strangling the, uh, Valish, which is just kind of rough. Like, maybe you toxic ink it, but it's just vexing. We see the Adora oh, ban yeah. out from Shizenix, an interesting one to see. I do expect the Amphitheer, or the Banfetir, if you will, from Trot. Yeah, That's precisely what goes both. down. That was just way too gruesome for him. And we still see the Nestle get picked up there. Very powerful into the vast majority of Shizenix's back line. Uh, basically doing a lot to invalidate uh, Osiara, Barnshi, and Koish. Babwa is obviously still very frightening into it, but we do still have the Calibus here. 
Uh, if we see like a uh, Torque Knight and then a Mudrid, that could be interesting. But that does mean that we don't have any Crystal Deluge synergy. Well, that Nestle, of course, is also good into the into the token. Um, I don't know if you mentioned that, but oh, uh, yeah, it, no, it is absolutely good into the it's token. Good into the token. Well. That's the other and... reason why I wanted to see that in the opener, because it would have dissuaded that. Oh, and look at this Osiara versus that team. That Osiara is looking, or sorry, uh, the Nestle. The Nestle is looking very good into that team. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the Nestle, like, this is why I wanted to see the Nestle, and I'm surprised that we didn't see it get banned again, because I think that was yeah, one of the most important I, things. I think it getting first pick would have actually been, like, a solid choice as well. So that, that Nestle is looking very good into this game. It gets threatened out by the Babawa and, and by the Valash, but it does well into the others. Uh, that OCR is looking very scary as well. It does, well, this okay into uh, into the Barnshi, of course, and into that Mudrid that we finally get to see again, which I'm really excited for. Yeah, no, uh, I hope um... it gets to do some stuff. It, it's a, it's a rough matchup for uh for the Mudrid here. Um, it, it doesn't have the best matchup, but uh, hey, if Trot can make it work, power to him. Okay, so the Mudrid has a couple key things that it can do. First off, it is a crystal sp it is a crystal resist on what is otherwise a very uh, very resilient team. Like, sorry, very vulnerable team into crystal. Like, if we look at this, it's basically just Volfi and Mudrid that are absorbing that, and the Volfi is still very vulnerable to a lot of the other things in the back. So, ha like, additionally, it's also something that can clap back more against Babua and uh, OCR, etc., etc. You want to conserve the Volfi and then, like, have the Mudrid as an additional crystal swap in. <clears throat> yeah, and this board state even is so so rough to fight against uh, for both players because we still don't know if it's Fisk or Special Valash. So if you make the wrong choice, that Valash has a Madness buff up. Uh, Calibus doesn't want to take a Wind Burst from Tolkien. Uh, so there's a lot of things possible here. The Valash dips, doesn't want to take any moves, and the Babawa gets swapped in. So we have that Babawa token again, and the Calibus also gets saved for later, and there, there's that Mudrid. But Mudrid does not want to face a Babawa. No, it does not. Uh, the Babawa is certainly not something that you want to see there. We still have the opportunity, however, of the Crystal Deluge into the Babawa. There's not much that can be done there. If that winds up happening, we will see an outspeed. Uh, Mudrid having a pretty impressive speed tiering there. Yeah, but if you, uh, if you want to put him to sleep, you need the synergy, right? Uh, yeah, we got a Barnshi right there. Yeah, so you know exactly what's being swapped in, so... Uh... I mean, that might be a, a little bit of an advantage for Shize if he expects that, and I My think only that is what happens. How does he take advantage of that, right? Like, the wind doesn't do enough to either of these two. The Deluge coming careening into this Babawa is gonna just put Babawa it to sleep. Takes massive damage, falls asleep for three turns here yeah. because of the Crystal Deluge. Massive move. Windburst comes out just onto the Mudred, like, expecting the Barnshee probably, but choosing to focus the Mudred, and now, uh,. Well, Trot grabbed a lot of tempo here because Mudrid plus uh, plus that barn, she's very, very scary. That it is. Uh, ultimately, I don't know how much the token's going to be doing this match. It's great into the Calibus, but... Um, uh... Well, it's specifically that Calibus that it's good against. Yeah, so you might want to conserve that as Shizanix here. The question is, what comes in on this? Like, actually, okay, speaking reasonably, I think Osiara is a re is an effective swap in this turn. You do have the threat of another Deluge next turn, but it's very likely that the high-speed Osiara will outspeed with the Aquatic Whirlwind. Yeah, Osiara generally... Well, Osiara, of course, being one of the fastest Temptum in the game, so it... It, um... I expect it to outspeed that Crystal Deluge, especially with the Aquatic Whirlwind. Uh, and, and well, I don't think Mudrid will tank that from Osiara. But you still have that Barnshi as well, and Barnshi uh, can do a lot of damage, as we know. Uh, and Babawa yeah. just being asleep for t two more turns is so big, just shutting it off for three turns. My big concern with Osiara is the fact that um, it's perfectly capable of swapping in for the Dust Vortex here. And, like, that is what I most suspect from, um... 
trot this turn is like trying to get the dust vortex onto the Tulkin there we see the tornado come into the valish covering the swap there and trying to execute the baboa before it can cause more havoc there we actually see both oh, of them land just oh. excising the valish from the game and i love that play because that means that uh what happens is the dust vortex always got outsped by the tornado so if baba stayed in then Bababa would have died to the tornado, mm -hmm. and then Tolkien would have taken that dust vortex. But if it, but if it gets swapped, then it something will take massive damage. Okay, uh, so it my will kill the is... Valash, It will kill the Fire Koish. Uh, so that was a really good play from Trot. I I really like that. Does Trot outspeed with Deluge? That's my next question. Yeah, that is the question. Uh, that will depend on on speed investments here. I'm pretty sure, um, because OCR. At well, OCR, of course, having that uh, that base 100 speed. But Madrid is not slow by any means. It has 95 base speed, so it's only just a little bit behind OCR. Crystal Deluge, of course, getting priority with Synergy. So if this uh, if this Madrid has a sizable amount of speed investment and this OCR might, it's, can be lacking in a little bit of speed investment, then you're suddenly looking at a completely different board where, uh, where Mudrid sleeps the Osiara and then, well, Trot probably, or Trot gets into a huge lead because having another Temtem asleep for that amount is is, is crippling. Yeah, certainly. Um, at this point, the other side of it is just the Mudrid's basically dead. There's no reason for Trot to conserve it at this point. It's done its job. Uh, it took out the Valish. That was what you brought it for. You've got the Nestle in the back, perfectly safe and comfortable in the meantime. Well, it did more than you wanted, or it probably did more than Trot wanted because it also slept the Babawa for three turns. Yeah, no, getting the Deluge off of Babawa was, was massive. I agree with that. So you got rid of the Valash. You pretty much got safely rid from the Babawa as well before it could do anything. And that's just... Well, okay, Babawa is still alive, but that's like a kill and a half for that Madrid. The Babawa could start careening back in later on uh, if Trot's not careful, but he's kept the Calibus safe for when it comes in. So yeah, that the, okay, so Barnshi goes out, so that means that we won't see a Crystal Deluge then, or at least it won't outspeed, and well, the Mudred gets saved for later as well, saving that potential Crystal Deluge for another turn. Oh. And Calibus plus Nestle gets swapped in, and that's a pretty good board against OCR. This if nothing else, is a protection against a combat- Look, okay, so this basically sets up into stopping the service from mattering uh, turn two as well. This means that, like, because this was preempted, um, OCR can't hope to pressure this board. Additionally, Koish can't either. Like, this combination is just pretty yeah, ruinous for Shizunix. The Koish swap uh, was a little bit unfortunate for Shizunix because they, you, you just swapped out token, which did okay into the Calibus. And you swapped in something that literally can't do anything against this board. Yeah, like, what this is, is it just gonna do? Like, very Lava strong wave, feeling. Cats, uh, water cannon, like nothing will nothing will damage here. Mm -hmm. And Trot is just, well, Trot just grabbed all the tempo with those swaps. Yeah, that double swap was in was really valuable for Trot. There, it caught so much momentum. Uh, like, now Shizunix has to find a way to get the Babawa back on the board. Uh, Blizzard is still an opportunity there, but if you're doing that, you're basically, you know, offering your horse up for sacrifice to the glorious Thunderstrike of our, uh, Wiggly Worm God here, which, while it probably won't KO the combination- well, okay, it's- it might KO, is the thing. It depends on the actual bulk of this OCR. Some OCRs can live a single T-Strike, but nothing lives the double in. Yeah, it's a specifically the double lane that's scary, right? And mm -hmm. once Osiara is gone, uh, then that Crystal Deluge suddenly becomes really scary again because yep. it will be able to sleep something again if you get the the double or if you get the double swap or. Well, uh, we could sort of see a priority on this Fire Koish as well. The Fire Koish out speeds into the Calibus, putting it to sleep, stopping the double threat, the electric storm coming down instead, not going for the KO, but instead just hitting both of them. Oh my god, and it only did 35% and the toxic ink just invalidating the hypnosis, and that was so unfortunate. Yeah, I'm a little curious about blizzarding the same Tim that you decided to put to so, sleep there from Shizunix. Yeah, so I... 
did he expect to underspeed a Calibus, maybe? I don't I don't know why you would expect to underspeed a Calibus as yeah, an OCR even with one priority. Yeah, even if OCR is not running like speed, I don't think you can outspeed that, and that is the win for Trot, and that means that uh Well, that's a tie then, right? That will indeed be a tie for both uh, Trot and Shizunix. Uh Unfortunate misplay at the end there. I think that if uh, he'd conserved his Osiara and just like hypnoed and swapped, that would have been better. But that wasn't what yeah, was definitely. read. That was uh, just sort of a weird one, a weird little turn there from Shizunix. But, you know, good game and well played regardless from both yeah, of our giants in Group C. Uh, we have plenty more of Shizunix up. upcoming, of course. Uh, yeah, Three. all the games that Shize has left will be played today, but with this tie, that also means that Gold will probably be pretty happy, because this means that Gold has a lot more uh, opportunities to uh, take over, uh, or at least qualify. Oh, uh, excellent. Yeah, no, of course, because this is uh, impeding Shizunix's triumphant ascension in Group C. So we're still at basically the same point as where we were before this match. Uh, Trot and Shize just... Both only getting one point, Trot mm -hmm, only mm -hmm. having one match left after this. She's a still two, and Gold has three matches left, so that, um, well, Gold might be able to, to sneak in that top eight as well, so everything is still up for, uh, for grabs in Group C here. Definitely. So once again, if you're checking out our upcoming matches board, you'll notice that we have uh, two matches coming up from Group C uh, in uh, our swiftly approaching slots at 1300. So that is in uh, one extra hour there. Uh, we will have Shiznix versus Axolotus. Axolotus being a very similar team to Trots. It'll be a similar matchup. And then uh, an hour and a half after that, we will have Shiznix versus Gold. After that, of course, later on today, we will have SMVid versus Ishir. If you did not catch the night uh the match last night uh sm vid tore a bloody swath and just kind of showed how much he's grown inside this tying uh double a best of two with ali for the first time this season yeah and i'm really excited to see that later today because well with the growth that sm fit has been going through it uh it wouldn't surprise me if he manages to take off a game from uh from ishir as well yeah, no, I mean, Rishi's no joke, obviously, but uh, I, I'm pretty impressed with how SMVids performed in the last match, and I do hope to see that again. Uh, with that, though, we're going to sign off now as we uh, take a small break before our next match. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank everybody who's stopped by and uh, checked in inside this time. Uh, if you haven't, be sure to check out, of course, the schedule and standings using the exclamation schedule and standing commands in chat. We'll also have link for those in our, a link for those in our YouTube video descriptions if you're watching this on YouTube later on, so go ahead and look down there as well. Yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in, and I hope to uh, to catch you soon. I'll be casting all day here, so uh, I will probably see all of you back in uh, in an hour. Yeah, definitely. And with that, I'd like to once again wish everybody here a lovely day, and we'll see you all very soon. See you soon.